Hi everyone, I'm Tom Letty and I'm an Architect Evangelist at Salesforce. This video is part of our Getting Started with Salesforce Diagrams video series. And as an architect, you know that you can use diagrams to communicate, collaborate, and share your vision with stakeholders. The Salesforce Diagram Kit of Parts is a set of components that you can use to build, customize, and reuse diagrams with a common visual language. And today, we're gonna walk through the Kit of Parts and use its components to build a diagram. Let's get started. We'll be using Lucidchart for this demo, but if you prefer a different diagramming tool, you can download the kit of parts from architect.salesforce.com. Under Design, click Resources and Templates, and then click the Diagram Kit of Parts card. And this is where you'll find links to download the kit of parts in a variety of different formats. Okay, here we are in Lucidchart. The Salesforce Diagram Shape Library in the Shapes palette on the left-hand side contains everything from the kit of parts. Now, if you don't see these shapes in your palette, check out our Salesforce Shapes and Lucidchart video to learn how to add them. The first thing we're going to add to our diagram is a header. Every diagram should have one of these because a header adds additional context that will help your audience understand what it's showing more easily. Next, let's add a title to show what our diagram is, and let's also increase the font size a little bit and add a description so our audience will understand its purpose. This box on the right side of the header is for the diagram's key. And if you're wondering what to put here, hold that thought for a minute because we're going to be coming back and adding things to it in a little bit. And now as a final touch, let's put a Salesforce logo above the title to show who owns the diagram. Now let's add some cards to our diagram. Cards represent the entities in your diagram, so that could include things like components or process steps, or today we're going to use them to represent systems and objects. And as you can see, there are a variety of different cards that can show different types of information, we're going to start with the simplest type, which is a collapse card. Let's go ahead and drop this card on our canvas and give it a label. We'll call it Sales Cloud. And notice when I selected a card, this panel opened on the right-hand side. You can use these toggle switches to adjust the properties of a card, which is similar to selecting different types of cards from the Shapes menu on the left. We're going to turn on Nesting, which will make our card into a container for other cards. And this is how you can show things like components that are part of a bigger system. Now let's grab a detailed card so we can add some attributes with additional information. We'll nest this one inside of our Sales Cloud card and say that it represents the contact object, and the attributes are going to be its fields. Now there are a ton of fields on the contact object, but we want to keep things as straightforward as possible for our audience, so we're going to limit our attributes to just the ones that are relevant for the diagram we're building. So for this demo, we're only going to add three. First name, last name, and email. Now let's do some cleanup work and resize our cards to make sure everything is lined up. And as a finishing touch, since Sales Cloud is a Salesforce product, let's give it a product logo. All right, now we're ready to add our next system. Now just a quick tip, there is nothing stopping us from putting this card anywhere on the canvas. But if you try to keep your cards lined up, it's going to make your diagrams a lot easier to read. We're going to say that this card represents Marketing Cloud, and let's set some properties for this one, too. We'll turn on nesting again, and we're also going to add some footer icons to this card so we can show some of Marketing Cloud's capabilities. For our nested card, we're going to copy the contact card from Sales Cloud because we're going to be using the same attributes, but we are going to give it a different label, so let's call this one Subscriber. And then let's line everything up again and add our Marketing Cloud product logo. You can use footer icons when you want to show additional information about a card. And depending on what that card represents and how you're using it in your diagram, your footer icons can show anything ranging from communication channels to large data volume indicators. In this demo, we're going to use them to show a couple of Marketing Cloud's capabilities. So let's add one for segments and another one for personalization. You remember that key we talked about earlier? This is where we're going to use it. You see, I know what these footer icons are, and you know what they are too because we just talked about it. But Anyone that just looks at the finished diagram without any other context might not be able to tell. So anytime you add footer icons to a card, or if you have any other lines or shapes in your diagram that won't be intuitive to your audience, you should add them to your key with labels that identify what they are. Now that we're finished with our two systems, let's add a connector to show how they're related to each other. Now you won't find connectors in the shapes palette. When you want to add one, just select a card and draw a line to the card that it's related to. This arrowhead on the right side of the connector is called an endpoint, and there are different types available, so depending on what type of connection you want to show, you may want to select a different one or maybe even none at all. 
We have another video in this series that covers connectors and endpoints in detail, so make sure to check that one out to learn more. Now you might also want to give your audience some additional details about a connector, and you can do that by adding some text to it. And let's also open our Line Styles dropdown and add a text pill. And that'll put an oval shape around the text and help to show that it's related to this connector. Okay, let's recenter and take a look at our finished diagram. We have a header that shows who owns the diagram, what it is, what it's for, and how to interpret it. And in the body of our diagram, we're showing that Sales Cloud has a contact with three attributes. The contact gets sent to Marketing Cloud, where it becomes a subscriber with the same attributes, and Marketing Cloud has personalization and segmentation capabilities. Okay, so to wrap things up, today we covered where to find the kit of parts and how to use its components to build a diagram. Make sure to like this video if you found it helpful and make sure to subscribe to our channel too. We've got a lot of other great videos about building Salesforce diagrams that you're not going to want to miss. Also, we'd love your feedback. Leave us a comment and let us know if you found this content to be helpful and let us know if there are any other topics you'd like us to cover too. And also, if you used what you learned in this video to build a diagram, let us know that too. Looking forward to seeing you next time.